Hi everyone, welcome to episode number 66 of the Bill Podcast and in this episode we'll be going through ES 2015 which is the next version of the standardized JavaScript. So I've been wanting to look through the standardized features once again and uh, through this episode I'll show you what are the some of the simple features that I'm really excited about and you can go ahead and use them immediately. So as usual, there are some links to go through. So this is the link by the ECMA International, the standardization body. And this is basically the description of the specification. So currently, whether it's Node or all the browsers, they're slowly adapting specs by spec. So let's go through also some of the other websites related. There is one on ESX features, and this will give you brief notes about each of the features. There is also this very important compatibility table. So for example, it will tell you among the transpilers such as Babel or Tracer or Clojure, which features are supported and also among the browsers here at the later part. So this is something you can refer to all the time to know which feature is supported. Next, uh, of course, Node. Some of the features are also supported in Node natively. So you can go ahead and check this documentation on which features are supported. And there is also a little markdown file on ECMAScript 6 tools. So there are transpilers, there are plugins such as Gulp, Broccoli, Grunt, and there are also some polyfills. So go ahead and check out this very useful documentation on ES6 tools. And finally, some ES6 learning as well. So apart from some of the books or some tutorials, this is kind of a very detailed list of ES6 learning. And finally, we will be touching a lot on this book, which is Exploring ES6. It's written by Axel Rushmeyer. And this book is available online for free, or you can also buy it if you found it useful. So I picked up a lot of these features in detail thanks to this book. All right, so let's go through some of the very basic features. So here I am in a completely empty folder. The very first thing we will do is to install the transpiler. So to do that, why don't we initiate a package.json? So inside the package.json, it's really simple. So why don't we install Babel.js, which is basically the transpiler. So I'm going to install Babel preset ES 2015 and dash dash save dev. So as to save it in the package.json as a development dependency. And when I come back, you can see that Babel preset ES2015 is part of the node modules right here. I will also go ahead here and define Babel presets as 2015 and plugins as empty. So let's go ahead and create a brand new file. Let's call it in.js. So Babel.js will take in this file. And over here, I'm going to declare it uh, a variable. And instead of var something, we will call it const and then pi. So as you know, pi is a constant which should not be changed. And in ES 2015, you can just declare it as const. So we are going to console log as pi. And why don't we try to change it? So let's say const or rather pi equals to 2.14. And then let's try to console log pi very quickly come here and uh, create a compile command so that we can use it all the time. And this compile command will basically say Babel, why don't you take in the in.js file that is the that is a file that will contain the ES 2015 code and output it to out.js. So let's clear the command line and let's do npm run compile. So you'll see here that there will be immediately an error because pi is read only on line four. And we come back here, it will say, yep, line four. So why don't I just comment it out and then let's try to compile it. Looks like it's working. So you can see that in.js is const pi, console log pi, and out.js is pretty similar. In fact, uh, it, if you notice that uh, underneath const, it is actually using variable, just that Babel is catching it so that this var is not changeable. Next, let's go through another concept of variable, which is called let. 
So let's start with var, say var x equals to 3, and then inside a block, if block, why don't we say if x is less than 4, which is true in this case, then we'll declare a variable called let x equals to 10. Console log x, and after we exit the block if, why don't we console log x here once again? So maybe I will just denote it here that this is inside if block and this is outside if block. Right, so why don't we go ahead and run this? So I'll once again say npm run compile, node and then out.js. And here you'll see inside the if block it is 10 and outside it is 3. So basically let is a block scoped variable. And that is why even if you come outside of it and then you try to console log x, it will still refer to 3 here. Why don't we try with uh, say var? What will happen? So let me compile it and then run it. Notice here in this case it will be 10 and 10 because you are once again declaring the x inside here because this is not block scoped. When you try to console log it outside the block if, it will still give you 10. So let me just change it to let here. And from now on, I'll just say npm run compile and and node out.js. And yep, you see here inside it will be 10 and outside it will still remain 3 as what we declared in line number 1. Now once again, it is interesting to see how Babel will transpile it. As you can see, it will do an underscore x meaning to say it will declare a totally new name for it. And that's how it differentiates the block scope versus the non-block scope X here. The next concept that we'll go through is something to do with notation, which is say binary, octal, or hexadecimal. And it is very, very easy to denote them. So to denote a binary, all you need to do is zero B for binary. And then let's just write some binary numbers. Why don't we run it? And you'll see that it is 11. Next, why don't we try, say, an octal number? So 0, O for octal in this case, say 777. Seven, seven. Now, this might come in very handy for, say, file permission purpose on Linux-based operating systems. So let's try to run it. And there you see, you'll see it as 511 in decimal. And finally, why don't we try to run hexadecimal? Console log, and in this case, it will be 0 and x. Why don't we try to console log, say, a color? In this case, we'll choose a very simple one, white. So we must be really familiar that ff is actually 255. Why don't we console log it first? And yep, it is 255. And if you want to very quickly change a hex, color to say RGB, all you need to do is just uh, put a comma in between and then simply 0xff plus and then another comma and then again 0xff. And when we run it, you'll see 255, 255, 255. The next thing we'll go through are some native string functions and I found this to be really, really useful. So the first one, let's try to console log it immediately, is uh, say you're trying to match the start of a file name. And usually, you know, in our database, uh, we have some backup files, say some data, and then with some numbers here, say the date, dot db. And you're trying to match and say whether this starts with say data underscore because you might have data you might have other keywords at the start here let's try to console log it and it will say true of course you can try with dta in which case it will simply give us false as you can see here node.js is or rather babel is not really transpiling it because it is supported natively already what about this time f ends with and this comes in really, really handy for checking file extensions. So say file.txt.endswith.txt. And when we try to run it, oops, end with my spelling. Let's try to run it once again. And it will give us true and true. Once again, Node.js is already supporting it. 
And hence, uh, you will see that it is exactly the same as what we have written here. The other function that I really like is called includes. So instead of doing index off and then checking whether it is minus one or above zero, we can simply do say JS meetup February dot includes. You just want to find out whether the meetup is there. And let's just check it. And it is false. Why is it false? Uh -huh, because it is checking for case sensitive. So if I capitalize it, it is giving me true. So I found these three really, really handy for any kind of string checking or manipulation. Other one is simply repeat. This kind of reminds me of Ruby a little bit. So repeat and then say four times. Let's try to run it. And there you go. It will give you high, 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 high. So of course we will probably have to include a little space here. And then let's run it once again. Yep, high is there four times. So pretty neat little functions here for string manipulation. Finally, I really, really like this. This is called string interpolation. So let's have a name and let's call it build podcast. So previously, when you want to add this string, you will have to concatenate it with the plus sign. Now, in this case, all you need is the backtick symbol and then you say welcome to. Instead of the plus sign, all you do is interpolate it with a dollar and curly brace and the name which stands for the variable const right here. And that's it. So remember, this is a backtick symbol. So now if you want to run it and yep, it will say welcome to Bill Podcast. Next, we'll go through something called destructuring, and this is really helpful to kind of compact your code. So let's go through a very simple function. And in this case, the function will just return an object. And this is pretty common in many of the functions we do. It has an object with a key and value pair. So let's do first name and then last name. And then we will have it a role as well, developer. And then let's uh, kind of get the results in a const. So const profile equals to get info. Now, usually what we'll have to do is uh, instantiate three different variables and then get the three values over here. But in this case, there's a really short form. So we'll do const again for the three variables. But in this case, we'll just write it in one line, say first, which is variable one, second and third. And then we will say profile. So with this one line, instead of writing three lines, var first equals to profile dot first, var last equals to profile dot last. This is a very compact way of writing. Now, why don't we try to console log it with a back tick? And then you can say I am. And then let's use some string interpolation. Last and work and I work as a role full stop why don't we try this out and there you see i'm jane doe and i work as a developer next we will do something very similar but instead of an object we will make an array so in this case let's make another function which will also return but instead of an object it will return an array so say get list and it returns say apple brinjal and caramel and similarly we will get these values inside a const and then we'll call it food equals to get list and then finally with destructuring we will create three variables and in this case it will be fruit say vegetable and dessert and we will just pass in food here so instead of writing once again three lines saying var fruit equals to food index zero var vegetable equals to food index one so and so forth we can just have it in one line which is much more readable and much more compact why don't we try to do a console log once again full stop and let's try it out and there you see i love apple brinjal and caramel why was there a little space ah there you go so let's run it once again and yep this is a very simple destructuring next let's go through function parameters which has made things a little bit more useful in ECMAScript. So let's say we have a function called area and very simply it will just return height times width. And of course you will have to pass in height 
and width, right? So this is something we always do. Now in ES 2015, we can pass in a default value. So we can just put it as equal to one and equal to one. So why don't we try it out? So console log and the first one we will say default value. And why don't we try out just area without passing in any params and let's see what is the result. So once again, I'll run it and it will say default value one. I'm just wondering whether we can string interpolate it. Why don't we try it? And backtick here, not an inverted comma. And there you see default value is one. So of course, if we change this to two, one times two should give us two. All right, so that was the default value. And the good thing is now, if we try to pass in a param, say calculate area, I'll use string interpolation again, calculate area. And let's put in the area right here, area. And inside here, we will pass in say two comma three. And now if we run it, there you see it will give us six. So what happens if we put in only the first one, calculate area with height? So we will not pass in three here. So let me just move around a little bit. Okay, so here we are passing in no params, here one param and here two params. So let's see what happens. And there you see it will give us four. That means it will take in two as the height and then it will use the default params two for the width. Next is something called the spread operator. So why don't we define say function fruits and then spread operator, you can just denote it as three dots and the names. So let's say you do not know the number of arguments. In this case, let's just return names for simplicity. And why don't we try to console log? console.log and in this case we'll just say fruits and let's pass in the first params which is say apples but remember spread operator we can pass in as many arguments as possible and it will just deal with it so why don't we try in the second example two params which is orange and pineapple let's try to run it and there you see it will give you apples, orange and apple. Now, once again, it is always very, very cool to look into the compiled code in the standard ES5 format. And you'll basically see what's going on here. They are using the native arguments dot length to kind of check. And this is what probably we would have done ourselves as well. And finally, why don't we try out with three params? So orange, apple, and say tomato, right? So there you go, it will give you three, two, or one, depending what you need. Now the cool thing is some of the functions such as say the maths function. So in this case, let's try math.max. You do not need to pass in just two, you can pass in a string of numbers. So say minus 10, 100, 234, and let's try to console log it. There you see, it will give us three, four, two, nine. So whether we are passing in one argument or two arguments, so let's cut off from four to three, you'll see that they will give us 25 right here. So which is pretty cool. So once again, we'll define a very simple array. Why don't we try something really simple? So let's define a function, hello, equals to array dot map. Now traditionally, what we would have done say just return console.log say hi there this is what we would have done why don't we run it and there you see hi there three times of course there's no change at all but with arrow function you'll be able to write this really really concisely so instead of writing all these verboseness we just replace it with an empty parenthesis and then just an arrow and you don't even need the return statement that's it why don't we try to run it? Oops, there's an error. Ah, uh, yes, I need one more bracket close. So this one was for console log and this one is for map. So let's try to run it. Oh yes, of course, we don't even need this. See how many things I really had to cut off. So it's really, really concise. And there you see, hi there. So once again, this entire thing was replaced with a one liner. So empty parentheses basically means there is no params. So what if there are params? Why don't we, in this case, create a very simple function called five times? 
and it will also be an array.map but in this case we will pass in each of the element so once again within parentheses so instead of no uh, params there'll be one param here and why don't we try to console log it five times x and that's it so concise so let's run it once again and there you see it will be 5 10 and 15 because it will times it with 1 2 and 3 so why don't we try two params so in this case we'll simply do array dot for each let's say and we will pass in say a and i for each element and the index and we will simply do a console log once again and we'll say i have a number of balls and at position index and then of course full stop let's try it out and there you see I have one ball at 0 two balls at 1 three balls at 2 next we will go through class and thanks to ES 2015 it has made it so much easier easy to read the code uh, in terms of when describing a class now I have never done classes in JavaScript using uh, the prototypes method so this is really really handy for me so why don't we define a class called person and we will have a constructor in this case which will basically instantiate it and we'll pass in uh, two params first name and then last name and we will simply define it as this dot first name is equals to first name and then this dot last name equals to last name and then let's define a very simple to string and which will simply return once again we'll use string interpolation first name or rather this dot first name space this dot last name so why don't we try out this class so we'll do var p equals to new person this is how we will create and uh, let's call this person Igor Novak and console.log and we'll simply call the toString function which is p.toString and there you see it is console logging Igor Novak but more importantly it is really interesting to see what is the out.js like so why don't we try out another class but this class will basically be a subclass of person so it will basically extend from person so why don't I call this class as neighbor and this neighbor will extend from person and similarly it will also have a constructor in this case first name last name but because it is extending from it it will also have a neighborhood and it will obviously take on the super class in this case person and it will also use first name and last name this basically means that it will execute the constructor from the parent class but apart from that it will also take on the neighborhood equals to neighborhood and then finally to string and it will return super dot to string plus from this dot neighborhood so why don't we instantiate another person but this time it is a neighbor so I'm gonna do a const neighbor person equals to new neighbor and in this case let's call her Min and her last name is Ong and she's from Stockholm why don't we try to console log it np dot to string let's try it out and there you see Min Ong from Stockholm is coming from the neighbor class so once again if you look at the output file this is pretty complicated stuff but this is what we would have done if we were to create classes in ECMAScript 5 so do go ahead and use the class I found it really really handy and concise next we will go through something called the for, for off loop which is really really simple so let's do let x and uh, just define x and uh, in this case we'll just iterate through x so say x off and then you can iterate through an array a comma b and we will simple simply console log it say x so this makes it really really uh, simple because we do not have to do the for loop and we can also avoid things like off by one error and there you see it will just console log a and b 
Next, we will try out some array functions. So I'll simply console log this and let's do array dot from and we will take a, a very simple array a comma b and we can get the keys out of it. So dot keys. Why don't we see what this returns? Sorry, it should be keys with the plural. And there you see, you will see zero and one here, like so zero and one keys. So similarly, we let's console log another array function. So in this case, we will take in an array, say six comma minus five and then eight. And then we will try to find an element which is say less than zero. So in this case, we will use the array function. So X refers to each of these elements and when X is less than zero. And there you see it will give you minus five. So in this case, it is basically giving us the first element which is less than zero. Because if we put in minus eight, it will still give us minus five. Next, this is something really, really useful. So I'm just gonna use the same array right here and this will basically find us the index. Index when x is less than zero. Let's try to console log it and try out. And it will say one. So once again, one is the index where it is for the first time less than zero. And lastly, we will go through something called dot fill. So say var array equals to new array three dot fill it with seven. Let's see what happens. If you do a console dot log of an array, you'll see that it will basically create an array which has three of them and each of them are seven. So this is very, very useful for us to instantiate an array. So let's say you want to create uh, an array of one dimension, 10 of them and fill it with zero, some kind of matrix initia initiation. So this is really, really easy to initiate something. Next, let's try out about uh, a new data structure called map. So I'm gonna define say a config equals to new map. So just like we have string and array, ECMAScript 2015 supports map. Map is basically a key value pair. So let's try say URL. This is something you might write it for your config. And similarly, I will also define something say type. Why don't we try to console log this and see what we get. Console log config. Oops, I missed a comma here. Let's try to run it again. And there you see it will basically return us with an object format. Now, if we want to get the values from it, what you can do is we will console log it one more time. And then with a backtick, let's write website is actually, all you need to do is config dot, and then you need to use get and pass in the name, which is URL. And there you see it will give us website equals to the value of the URL right here. So apart from get, let's try to go through also something called set. So let's create another map called fruits and new map. And in this case, instead of defining it right after declaring new map, we can also set it. So we can say new maps or we can do fruits dot set and we can do one comma apple. So why don't we try to console log fruits and there you see, you will see another type of map where one and then apple, but just that here we are setting it. So once again, we can also set a few more. So let's say two and three. So let's say banana, cranberries. And there you see, you will have the map right here. Now map also comes with another function other than get and set, and that is say checking. So you can check with a console.log fruits dot has one. So let's try to run it. And yep, it will say true. Similarly, you can also do whether uh, config has say URL. So does the config provide us with URL? And it will say true here as well. But if you say website, it should say false. Let's run it. And there you go, it says false. Finally, another useful thing is uh, to know the size. So console.log and I'm gonna use the backtick once again and string interpolation. 
and you can simply do fruits dot size to know the size of it and of course there were three of them and yep fruits have three of them so config is uh, very useful for a type of key value pair and if you want to do some get set and uh, get the size of it check some values this is really useful let's now move on to another data type which is called uh, set so const set equals to new set and in this case we will use the function called add and why don't we call it red and let's try to console log say set dot has red and basically set is an array similar to array but it will have a lot of unique values so I'll explain to you what it is so of course it is true now like I said it has a unique value so why don't I add red a few times and then I try to add green and why don't we console log the entire set and see what happens and you will still see there are only two of them which is red and green despite adding red multiple times and of course if you try to console log size it will still give us set dot size it should still give us two despite adding red a few times and there you see it is two so if you need a structure similar to an array but it should have unique values you can use set next let's go through promises and if you have gone through async functions with callbacks you will find the promise way of writing the syntax pretty helpful so why don't we try to do an example function and you will pass in a param and in this case uh, what you will do is you will return say new promise and this is where you will define the function and it should come with resolve and reject params and inside here we will say that well if param is more than two which is really really trivial but it will help us understand it then we will resolve and we will pass in params times two and if or let's say we can even do like else yeah else it should reject and it should give uh, say param divided by two all right so how do we use this kind of function that kind of returns a promise so let's say we pass in four as the param here so obviously four is greater than two and it will it should be a success so we should do then so if it is a success it will take in the value and we will use an arrow function now and we'll say console.log success actually why don't we use a string interpolation and we will pass in the value and how do we catch the error if there is an error you simply do catch and then error console.log error and you pass in the error here right so why don't we try this out well yes obviously it will be a success and it should give us eight now if we pass in say two or say one yeah let's pass in one so in this case it will give us error and it will return us 0 0.5 so this is a very neat way of doing things because you will be able to extract the error handling from the actual function why don't we use it with a function like say set timeout which actually has a delay so function and we'll call it just delay func pass in delay and we will return new promise function so very similar we will pass in resolve and then reject and inside here like you see here we, we are actually describing the function here but instead of that we will just pass in set timeout which has already been defined natively and pass in resolve and reject so just like the previous way of uh, doing it we will call the function once again so we'll say delay func but in this case we will pass in say 2000 to denote to after two seconds and then we will simply do dot then why don't we pass in a function with zero params using arrow functions and then we will simply say console.log done and there you see it will give us done so that was it about this episode once again do check out this book exploring es6 and i highly recommend you to buy it as well this is the book that uh, describes in very comprehensive manner what you need to know about es6 over here you see it goes through uh, what is es6 and javascript 
and then it basically goes through like big chapters like data symbol template literals variable destructuring modularity arrow functions some things that I've briefly touched, the, but this book really, really goes into detail and it has helped me a lot. So once again, go ahead and buy and support the author, Axel. And for the build link of the episode, I would actually go to Axel's blog, which is uh, duality or duality.com. He is constantly blogging about JavaScript and what's happening with the standards. He's a computer scientist, so he gets to explain and ex uh, explain the language in a very computer science fashion, which I like to get insights into. So, yep, go ahead and uh, have fun with ECMAScript 2015. And yep, so go ahead uh, and have a look at all the rest of the episodes of Build Podcast found at build-podcast.com. You can either subscribe through RSS, iTunes, Vimeo, YouTube, GitHub or Twitter. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.